Hey there, welcome back to my channel. This is Manif Ali, a self-made multimillionaire. I'm here to guide you towards success. If you're new here, please don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content like this. Please give this video a thumbs up for that algorithm to recognize me. There is an interesting theory about self-awareness. It says, you are not your thoughts, but the entity that's observing your thoughts. You are the thinker separate and apart from your thoughts. This means that we are separated from our thoughts and merely just an observer. It is based on the idea that we go on with our life the way we will, without giving extra thought to our inner self. And if you do, that's where self-evaluation comes in. I found this theory quite interesting, and it makes understanding self-awareness much easier and simpler. I mean, if you see self-awareness as it is, it is a difficult concept to grasp what it's all about. But if you try to see it from the perspective of just being an observer, it kind of makes sense. Anyway, I was talking about the theory of self-awareness because in today's video, I'll be sharing with you the different ways to develop self-awareness. But before we go into it, let's first talk about why self-awareness is important, especially when it comes to your success in life. Well, there are many benefits to being self-aware. First, being a highly self-aware individual will make you a better decision maker. This is because you're very much aware of the things that will make you happy and fulfilled, so every decision that you make is aligned with your preferences. Second, it always allows you to see from different perspectives, making your objectives less biased. Third, it helps you build better and more meaningful relationships. Since you see things from multiple perspectives, you're less prejudiced and more empathetic with others. Lastly, you have the power to influence results. Since you see yourself objectively, you're more creative and confident than others. You are a natural leader that is capable of empowering others and thus capable of producing more positive results. Basically being self-aware, you are capable of evaluating your thoughts objectively and you can manifest them positively into your actions. On the other hand, if you fail to do so, you are prone to negative emotions because you cannot align your choices with what you truly want. So you often feel like you always are making the wrong decision and you will always be unsatisfied with the results of your choices. Now that we're done with that, let's go on to see how we can develop self-awareness. Number one, be inquisitive about yourself. If you wanna be self-aware, the first thing you need to do is to be inquisitive about yourself. Be curious about yourself. Be the investigator of your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, and how they translate into your action. Know everything you can about yourself and the things that make you happy, the things that irritate you, the things that will calm you down, the things that you fear, or things that will cheer you up. Sometimes we are just too scared to confront ourselves because we are afraid of finding out something unpleasant within us. And if your goal is to become a highly self-aware individual, you will have no choice but to do it like this. And so that means spending a little time with yourself in self-reflection and maybe even spending a little bit of time in solitude. Number two is understanding and knowing what your strengths are. After knowing yourself better, you get a clue about your strength. And every human being on the face of this planet has strengths. And if so, dig into it deeper and understand how to use them towards your advantage. For instance, if one of your strengths is being a good, effective communicator, how can you use it to achieve your goal? You can use it to build meaningful connections. Knowing your strengths is not enough. You need to understand how to utilize them and make conscious efforts in how to improve on them as well. For example, I've always been a pretty good public speaker and I knew that that was one of my strengths when I knew that people were actually nervous about it. And I've used that over time to refine my skills more and more. And when I took on being on video, it was another tool in my toolbox. So it's okay if you're not a superhero in that strength, but you know that it's quite possibly better than other people. Number three, be aware of your weaknesses. There are always two sides to a coin and knowing only your strength is not enough to make you highly self-aware. You also need to know your weaknesses and knowing your weaknesses makes you aware of where your limits are and where you need help. Also knowing them gives you a picture of where you need to focus on your own personal development. My weaknesses were patience, even empathy towards other people because I have a, a very low bullshit meter. And so cutting to the point was one of my weaknesses or being too abrupt. And I've worked on that collectively over time. I still need help in, the, in some of those areas though. Number four, ask for feedback. Sometimes learning about yourself on your own can be a pretty challenging thing. So asking feedback from others can be a way to know ourselves better. Remember, like I said earlier in this video, a highly self-aware individual is capable of looking at different perspectives. This is one way of doing it. Self-aware individuals are capable of accepting objective criticism from people who really matter in your life. They don't view it as something negative, but instead they take it as a learning experience and a way to get better. Now look, if one person tells you the one thing about you, that could be their opinion. If 10 people are 
are telling you, hey, you're constantly being late, then you know there's some truth to that, right? Number five is be aware of what triggers you. No matter how calm the sea is, it ripples when a strong wind blows. And the same is true for people. No matter how kind and calm you are, there are definitely some things that will trigger you. Find out what they are, and by knowing the things that trigger you, you'll be able to avoid them sometimes, and if not, at least be able to prepare defensive mechanisms on how to cope yourself or how to cope with it at the very least. For instance, let's say one of your triggers is being overly needed at work, and you are so capable at your work that everyone, even other departments, go to you for help. While you're pleased about being acknowledged, you don't like when all of these people keep coming to you because you can't do any of your own work. So instead of lashing out and becoming angry, at worst, you could end up saying some hurtful or insulting things to others. But if you're aware of this trigger, you'll be able to recognize the signs when you're about to explode. So you can either excuse yourself or tell your colleagues that you can't help them at the moment because you also have your own work to do. By doing this, you'll maintain your professionalism and continue good relationships with your colleagues. I know for me, my triggers are, if you raise your voice at me, it's gonna be a trigger for me. I know that certain people, like for, for me, greed really is a trigger for me or not considering other people's feelings or uh, being too much of an egotistical uh, you know, person around me that's gonna trigger me a little bit. So I try to keep that in check and with 125 people running around here, that could be a challenge. Number six, know your core values. Your core values are the foundations of your life. It is the basis of your decisions and guides you for building relationships and solving problems. Knowing your core values is essential for self-awareness and achieving your personal and professional goals. My core value, for example, is that I want to be as professional as I can be and there are some things that I'm just not willing to do. I don't care how much money is at the table. Make sure you have your core values in check. And after all, by clearly understanding your core values, you will be better. You will have a better picture of what you want to do with your life and what you need to do to get them. For instance, if you're trying to decide where to work, you've received two job offers from two equally great companies. Let's say one of your core values is growth. So deciding on which company to choose, you'll choose a company that aligns with your core values, which is professional and personal growth. Whenever you're confronted with challenging choices, you always return to your core values. So knowing them would be beneficial since you will be aware of what made you make those type of decisions. Number seven, write things down. According to a study, people are 42% more likely to reach your goals when they write them down. Writing has always been incorporated when achieving goals as it is proven effective in a lot of studies. But what does it have to do with self-awareness? Well, it's because when you write it down, it's easier to reevaluate your thoughts. It provides you a written record instead of solely relying on your memory. It is similar to building a house. You need a blueprint or a house plan and things get easier and faster if you have one rather than just relying on your imagination on how it will turn out. So write anything you want from your goals to how you will achieve them to what you are going to feel. You can also write the things you want to change and the things you want to hold back on and all of your triggers and everything else. A daily record of this type of information will show you how far you've come and what aspects of your life still need improvement. What you need to do is to take it even further. And number eight is to keep an open mind. This one is important. I mean, how can you consider yourself a highly self-aware individual if you're not open-minded? Being open-minded doesn't mean that you'll take on everything. Being open-minded means being receptive to different perspectives and be willing to try new experiences. This makes you more attuned with others because you believe that everyone has a right to express themselves regardless of your different beliefs or values. But sometimes as a leader, you're gonna have to make decisions without taking a whole poll of what everybody else feels. The important thing is you don't argue, but you listen, you take in others' opinions wholeheartedly, even if it means it challenges your beliefs, but ultimately you're going to make your own decision. This will make you a natural and successful leader. You're not trying to appease everyone, but it's okay to have different opinions. And ultimately you make the difficult decision. And that's all for the ways to develop your self-awareness. But before we wrap up today's video, did you know that according to research, 95% of the people believe that they are self-aware. But in reality, only 10 to 15 people are truly self-aware. How about you? Do you also think that you're a self-aware individual? Please let me know down in the comment section below if you need to work on it or you've made great strides and I'm open to you making more suggestions because I'm open-minded. Thank you so much for staying with me to the end for that. And here's an extra tip on how you can develop self-awareness. Always check in with yourself on a daily basis and developing self-awareness like any other aspect of your life is a lifelong process. It doesn't happen today, it won't happen by tomorrow, but maybe it'll take months and if not years to develop. And that's why it's important to ask yourself regularly, where are you right now in your journey? And how do you feel about the whole process? Is it fulfilling? Is it challenging? What makes it fulfilling? What makes it challenging? Remember, constant observation of your thoughts and actions is the key to obtaining self-awareness. And one way 
of doing that is to check in with yourself and track your progress. Small incremental changes over time will create lifestyles. Thank you so much for watching today's video. And if you found this content valuable, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and click on that subscribe button. If you're still hungry for more, you can check out the next video on my take on the power of habit by Charles Duhigg next.